The North Dakota Game and Fish Department manages over 200 wildlife management areas statewide. Today we're at Morton County WMA south of Mandan visiting with Wildlife Resource Management Supervisor Levi Jacobson and Morton County Cattle Rancher Scott Ressler. We're going to talk the benefits of having cattle graze on these WMAs. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. We got a full section, 640 acres. Right now we're running about 50 pairs. We got the WMA split up into about six different grazing cells. Try and graze half each year. 2015, I caught wind that the North Dakota Game of Fish was starting to open up some of these wildlife managers and integrating livestock into them. And, and then we secured a USDA NRCS grant and we got some cross fences put in and we got a well dug and then the pipeline and tanks put across for different paddocks. We secured that in 2016 and 2017 was our first year of putting livestock out on the Morton County Wildlife Management Area. Right away it looks like they're doing more damage than good, but really those grasses need some sort of management. Otherwise these cool season invasives will just take over and we really won't have much hunting cover or diversity at all. We try to manage most of our native prairie with cattle. And, that, and that's kind of the goal. Just because historically, I mean, that's how native prairie evolved. So our, a lot of our tame grass stuff, we don't. It's not necessarily worth it. We can. We can farm it again and replant it or hay it and that kind of stuff, but this native prairie obviously we aren't going to break it up and try and make it any better. So cattle and fire are about our only options. That hoof action just rejuvenates that, that old dead, dead mat of grass and we've been at a higher stocking rate and in, in trying to get to a higher one just to get some of that uh, uh, hoof action to get that land rejuvenated. The native range is a tough, tough, tough critter and, but we need to be able, you have to be able to utilize it and graze it and get, get that off there and so yeah absolutely it's come back through, through hoof action and livestock grazing. To us, it manages our native prairie. So this WMA is pretty much all native prairie except for about 15 acres in the southwest corner there. So that, the cows are out here to chew down the old grass and we try to get them in here early and hit different seasons to kind of give different structure to the grasses. So like these ones here are gonna hit these cool season invasives early and then we'll kind of move them through. And then when we come back and do this the following, or in two years, will rotate opposite and give the pastures or the cells a different different kind of grazing regimen. Try and keep that different diversity out there. This piece here we have been to um, this year and we weren't here last year, but we're gonna, this will be our spot this year to hit. So rotating these cattle seems to be just fine. We work it with the, uh, the water tanks so the cows know where they're coming. So it's not that much of a big deal to, um, to come out and, and to rotate them. We're mostly in there 15 to 20 days and then we rotate out and we're not back in there for another year and a half. Our WMA is that we're, our main purpose is hunting, so we want to maintain some hunting cover out there in the fall. So if we graze half of it and say, you know, things dry up here after this spring, this might not come back that great this year and we want to have some hunting cover out here come fall. There's a, a, a payment that we pay for grazing lease, um, but certainly we have no problem paying a grazing lease and treating this facility and this land like it's ours. Um, appreciate the opportunity to do it and so understand that there has to be some sort of stipend and that's really not an issue um, to, be able to, to be able to do that and utilize this land. It's fairly cheap for them but they got to follow our, our guidelines. We pretty much tell them when to graze, how many to graze, and how long to graze. So it's a lot of work. He puts up the fence, moves them, rotates them. We tried to find the records of the last time cattle have been on this place and they really didn't know for sure. So as long as it's been a wildlife manager area, they don't think there's been livestock on there. And, and the range had showed that there was lots of thick, thick litter um, that had really integrated and just really choked out the native ranges. And we're slowly starting to bring them back now. Um, I remember as a kid that this was a popular area to come sit in the blinds and watch the, the sharp-tailed grouse dance. And that was essentially eliminated. They're, they weren't here anymore. And now they're back. We're starting to see some uh, Hungarian partridge back. And um, the grouse are back dancing in those same areas again. The trampling, the hoof actions are really important also keeping that and just keeping like the nutrients. I know like when we hay places, you know, you're taking off all the nutrients, everything out of there versus it's cattle, they're pooping and peeing and that stuff. 
putting carbon back into the soil. So it's it's just the whole whole process of it that is good for the soil. Ducks Unlimited, Pheasants Forever, Game and Fish, all these wildlife groups have have you know changed the mindset that the industry of the beef cattle industry and integrating these livestock in there has been a great thing. I think once they've seen the, the work that was done out here in revegetating and rejuvenating this native range. Historically, wildlife folks always thought cattle were bad for wildlife and I mean the science and whatnot has come a long ways. So it's, it's, it's more beneficial than a detriment. I work for the North Dakota Stockman Association and on that professional level we've seen the openness of the wildlife management people across the state to be able to know that livestock and wildlife have, got, have a good place and I think the outdoorsman or the hunting public has figured it out as well. We got sharp-tailed grouse, there's white-tailed deer, mule deer, a lot of wild turkeys, probably actually I know there's a few pheasants so a little bit of everything out here. It gets a lot of turkey hunters, a lot of deer hunters in the fall. Grouse hunters, I know there's a lot of people that come out here and shoot grouse. Um, it's been a great thing to integrate livestock back into these wildlife management areas. It's been a great integration. The livestock and wildlife certainly have an opportunity to, co to cohabitate together. And it's been great for us and I believe it's been great for the wildlife as well.